Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you to the 20th All India Women's Education Fund Association Nina Sibyl Memorial Award function. We shall commence the program with an invocation by Dr. T.G. Rupa, Professor of the Department of Resource Management and Design Application at Lady Irvin College. This will be accompanied by the lamp lighting ceremony marking the initiation of today's function. I would request our eminent guests and the esteemed executive members of, uh, of IWFA to join us for the lamp lighting ceremony. Pratama Vandana Gauri Nandana Pratama Vandana Gauri Nandana He Shiva Nandana Pahi Gajanana He Shiva Nandana Pahi Gajanana Pratama Vandana Gauri Nandana Eka Danta Guna Vandya Vinayaka Eka Danta Guna Vandya Vinayaka Vigna Harana Shubha Mangala Charana Vigna Harana Shubha Mangala Charana Pranava Swarupa Pahi Gajanana Pranava Swarupa Pahi Gajanana Prathama Vandana Gauri Nandana Today, we are delighted to have amidst us several eminent guests on the dais, including Dr. Karan Singh, parliamentarian, and Mr. Kapil Sibyl, MP of Rajya Sabha. I would request the team to welcome them with a bouquet of flowers. I would also like to in, invite on the dais. Sir. Sir. I would now like to invite Mrs. Asha Chandra, President of IWFA, who has spearheaded IWFA's programs in arenas such as sustainable development for the welfare of the rural and urban communities, education of women and sanitation, and programs to fight violence against women, to share a few words with us about IWFA and to welcome this August gathering. Dr. Karan Singh Ji, IWFA patron, Shri Kapil Sibal Ji, politician, lawyer, author, and poet, and a dear friend of IWFA, Ambassador Neelam Sabarwal, the Sibal family, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to each of you. 20 years ago, the Nina Sibal Award was instituted to celebrate the life of Mrs. Sibal and with family, friends, and well-wishers, pay tribute to her on her birth anniversary. In the two years of COVID-19 online programming, this group has now expanded to include outstation awardees, college youth, seniors, 
and participants from India and abroad. This learning experience has enabled us to merge today's offline program with the online mode to reach this larger audience. Celebrating 93 years of the All India Women's Education Fund Association, IWAFA, our organization is working in unison on state-wise grassroots programs, as well as webinars and projects, both nationally and at the UN. Recognizing that women's economic empowerment is the key to overall development, IWAFA is collaborating in Care India's ambitious Water and Women program. The objective of this initiative is to improve and sustain the health and well-being of two lakh women, their households and communities touched by the apparel industry. To develop a green economy at scale, IWAFA is conducting a, green, a pilot research project among 900 women in 30 villages in Madhya Pradesh to outline the skill development, enterprise building opportunities, entrepreneurship, assessments and design to plan a systemat system systematic intervention for, for women and SAGs in the project region. Realizing the need to include youth participation in ameliorating the effect of climate change, IWAFA with the Department of Forest and Wildlife and the Bombay Natural History Society has participated in a plantation drive in nurseries that are being developed over about three acres, three hectares of land in Tughlaqabad area of Delhi to regenerate several native species which were lost from Delhi's forests, the Lady Irwin College students, college faculty, IWAFA executive, and the All India Women's Conference helped to provide sufficient training in plantation and monitoring procedures for implementation in other programs. To enhance the mandate of the Nina Sibyl Memorial Award, that recognizes organizations working with disabilities, IWAFA in 2020 held the COVID-19 Sustainable Solutions for Persons with Disabilities COVID-19 webinars with awardees of previous Nina Sibyl Award. This year, IWAFA has held the very successful series of five webinars specific learning disabilities, dyslexia, with families, faculty, experts, students, and communities. Organized by Professor Renu Malavia, the findings of this webinar series are reported in a substantive publication which is being released today. After a gap of two years, while the world has been in a stop and reset mode, IWAFA has emerged stronger, envisioning a bright future as we approach our centenary status in the years to come. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Chandra, for that illuminating insight into the history of the Nina Sibyl Award and IWAFA's achievements and activities over the past few years. I would now like to invite Ms. Rita Menon, Vice President of IWAFA and Chair of the Governing Body of Lady Irwin College to introduce a film released by IWAFA at the UN Commission on Status of Women 2022. Uh, respected uh, guests for the evening, ladies and gentlemen. The 66th session of the United Nations Commission on the Status of Women, known as CSW 66, was held virtually from 14th to 25th March 2022. In partnership with the Permanent Mission of India to the United Nations in New York, 
The All India Women's Education Fund Association, IWAFA, held a virtual side event, A World We Women and Girls Want, Lifestyle for the Environment, LIFE, on the 21st of March 2022. A seven minute film presented during the event took forward Prime Minister Naren Modi's call at the conference of the parties 26 for a need for all of us to come together and take lifestyle for environment, that is life, forward as a campaign and his call for development, Sapka Saat, Sapka Vikas, Sapka Prayas, in the context of the Commission on the Safety of Women, 66th Priority Theme. The film showcased gender responsive actions that are women-led, promote environmentally safe lifestyles, are mindful, use technology, and provide economic empowerment to women. It highlighted a revival that values women's voices, agency, participation, and leadership as a people-centric, uh, sustainable lifestyle. Ladies and gentlemen, we present the film that we present. Change. How does it occur? There are a million different answers to the question. Dangerously polluted air is and uh, the global COVID-19 pandemic has the virus in the jungle to save the planet. We will change. We will change. But one thing that is common for all kinds of change is that they are gradual. They start in the fist-sized hearts of those few who dream. My dream is that no person in India should die because of lack of treatment. Yeah, the ideal future will be, you know, limitless. You'll have clean air, water, you know, no pollution, nothing. collective participation lifestyle for environment, yani life ko you see, this dream, it's woven with the five strands of matter that hold the world's existence. Because when women dream, they dream of the earth's blooming colors that reach the sky. Earth, birth and nurture. When I'm a small uh, mother, you should tell that before you enter a forest to say a kind word, uh, I do have a very intimate relationship with nature and I felt a uh, so language that is both sensitive and can spread the right message. It's a very really, uh, conflicting time for farmers in the community today because uh, there's climate change that is happening, we are facing shortage of water. The community is losing the touch with the soil and the nature due to the modernity slipping inside the community. This project intends to restore the relationship of uh, the Apatanis and the relationship with the nature by remembering what they know through their oral traditions, their oral knowledge system and uh, by giving it a shape and a form. I hope we can build a bridge towards the modernity and our old ways of being. They dream of a rain that washes away the worry lines of the whole world. Water, writing their own stories.
They dream of the wind, carrying sweetness to their loved ones. Air, spreading warmth in natural disasters. I had a dream that I went to the medical lab, but my family conditions were very bad. But when I was told that I knew that the skill of the atom is here, I had to study here, then I had to study in the room hostel, and then I had to study in the room hostel. It was a very low cost. So I had to go to my admission. As a doctor, I have never experienced a disaster like COVID-19 in my whole life. The country was in acute shortage of healthcare workers. So at that time, GITM took the challenge to skill the young women so that they can work as a COVID warrior in this pandemic. They dream of the healing fires of their hearth. Fire, delivering light. Over 800 million people live in 700,000 villages and did not access quality services, especially when it comes to clean energy, climate-friendly health and sanitation solutions. Frontier Markets was founded in 2011 with a mission to help ease the life of rural families across the country. We started off with clean energy products and solar solutions. Our Sarah Jeevan Sahilis are digital entrepreneurs who are using our social commerce platform, the Nadi Sahili app, to facilitate sales and doorstep deliveries in their villages, helping rural families truly understand why clean energy solutions were critical, what is the role of climate and solutions to help create champions for change. They dream of the sky, reaching out and weaving itself into their skirts as it plays with the wind. Sky, the uncaged flight. Waste is not waste until you really waste it. The fashion industry is one of the most polluted industry in the world at the moment. With so much of fabric every day getting into the landfills, what happens to those fabrics? We're an eco-conscious fashion hub that's based out of New Delhi. Uh, by that I mean we create conscious clothing. And we ensure that, you know, no shred is wasted. Not even a single thread that comes out is not thrown out. Everything is used back into the production cycle. So, in terms, we're adding more value to these scraps that would have ended up into the landfill. Uh, how we do that? We make belts, earrings, uh, patch jackets, anything, yeah. everything you want. Because we believe in the afterlife of those scraps. We believe in reforming them, changing them, giving a new life. In a world where we have forgotten what came before us and what will exist after us, it is them, the women, these women, who refuse to let that dream slip through the cracks, who work every day for a better world. A world where life takes priority. Change? There are a million ways in which it occurs. But the way these women do it, there's something about it, isn't there? Thank you, Rita Ji, for introducing us to this wonderful and rousing film. It now gives me great pleasure to announce that the report, which was specifically commissioned for the 20th Nina Sibyl Memorial Awards by IWFA, titled Specific Learning Disability Webinar Report, and which is based on responses of the previous 19 Nina Sibyl Award winners and other organizations, will be released tonight. I would request all the members of the executive of IWFA to come on stage for this release of the report. I would now like to request Dr. Karan Singh and Mr. Kapil Sibyl to untie the ribbon and release the IWFA Nina Sibyl report and publication along with the members of the executive.
As you're all aware, the Nina Sibyl Memorial Award for the Differently Able is awarded by IWFI every year since 2003 with the invaluable support of Mr. Kapil Sibyl. I would like to invite Dr. Karan Singh, a true Renaissance man, and a parliamentarian, philanthropist, and poet whose achievements need no introduction. And more recently, he, uh, he has held the position of the Chancellor of the Banaras Hindu University to share a few words and introduce this prestigious award. So it's a pre-Renaissance Mic. 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 Mic.
and powerful weather events take place and they're going to continue. The ice caps are melting, the seas are rising. Within a few years, half a dozen countries are simply going to disappear from the face of the earth. And that is something which is really very dangerous. We are trying our best, but I don't think we are going to ever achieve that Paris uh, uh, target. And now, in fact, the reverse is happening. Because of this Russian-Ukraine war, the uh, coal factories again are beginning to reopen in Europe. So we are going back to the old polluting industries. How are we going to meet the, the, the uh, target? I don't think it's possible. Nonetheless, we must do whatever we can. And in India, I'm glad to see there is now a gr gr growing awareness uh, for, of the importance of uh, the environment. I was on uh, the Mrs. Gandhi's uh, uh, delegation to the first United Nations Conference on the Human Environment in Stockholm in uh, 1978, I think. And uh, from then on, there's been a lot of... Uh, Interest, there's more awareness now, the problem is also growing. So we have got to, in this country, do whatever we can. The second existential threat, of course, is the threat of nuclear war. And we thought that that was something that could never happen. nuclear war The fact of the matter is, the whole of Europe now, the nuclear weapons are, are on, on alert. And there's constant talk when this wretched war is going on between Russia and Ukraine of nuclear weapons. So you never know. Not to speak of the eccentric young man in North Korea. You never know. He is also a very strange young man. You know the one I'm talking about. And uh, so between them and between Ukraine and the, you know, the world is again in really serious danger. We thought Europe could never have a war. All the world wars were supposed to be in the developing countries, in Asia, in Africa. Lo and behold, a war in the heart of Europe. And there doesn't seem to be any end. I can't see any end to the war. I mean, there's nobody who's actually trying to intervene. There's no clear-cut war aim. So we, we never know this is, can go on for a very long time. And the longer it goes, the more the threat. And the third existential threat, of course, is pandemics. As you know, a pandemic in the Middle Ages uh, wiped out uh, one-third or two-thirds of Europe's uh, population. This time also has been pretty bad. I mean, uh, over a crore of people have died from uh, this, uh, this disease, COVID. And, uh, um, you know, you never know when something else might hit us. And this brings home the importance of strengthening our health infrastructure. We did reasonably well, I must say, very quickly. We tried to get our act together and we were able to, uh, to some extent, to mitigate, although lakhs of people died in India also. But uh, we have this a lesson for us. So between these three existential threats, we are all living, as the Chinese curse says, May you be born in exciting times. <laughs> so we're living in exciting times. So anyhow, I just said that because uh, what we are doing here is uh, uh, also targeting one important aspect of the health infrastructure, and that is the handicap. We still do, although there are lots of laws, there are still places where you cannot get uh, if, you, if you are handicapped. I think Habitat Centre itself, the, the large hall, you can't get there, you can't go down, and you've got to be some kind of a mountaineer to go down and to come up those steps again. And if you want to go to the toilet, you've got to again go down 20 steps and come up. I mean, what is this? Habitat Centre, for God's sake, which is supposed to be, it was supposed to be the model centre. And this is the sort of facility you have here. So IIC is much better, I must tell you, because I was in charge of that for several years. <laughs> So, um, anyhow, um, as I said, uh, this, this award is doing very well and uh, we are now going to have reminiscences from Ambassador Neelam Sabarwal. You were the ambassador, not your husband. <laughs>
Yeah. Okay, I thought so, yes. Okay, good. Yes, please do. Please welcome Neelam Sabarwalji, uh, Honorable Ambassador, who was closely, closely associated with Nina Sabarwalji in her diplomatic journey to share her reminiscences. Thank you very much. Respected Dr. Karan Singh Ji, Shri Kapil Sibyl, Member of Parliament, dear members of the family, Mrs. Asha Chandra, President of IWFA, distinguished members of the jury, ladies and gentlemen. There could be no greater tribute to Nina's lifelong crusade for the rights of the underprivileged than by recognizing and celebrating her life as an exceptional individual dedicated to working for the welfare and upliftment of people with disabilities. Nor could there be a nobler way to honor her memory than by the thoughtful institution of a generous award in her name, just enhanced further by her husband, Sri Kapil Sibyl, member of parliament, Rajya Sabha, and a leading lawyer in the country. The patron of the award since its inception has been the highly respected and learned scholar, philosopher, and political personality in India, respected Dr. Karan Singh Ji. And this, in my mind, elevates at once the stature and the significance of the award. Of course, the choice of IWFA for administering the Nina Civil Memorial Award is also most befitting with its impressive record of more than nine decades of striving for empowerment of women, gender parity, advancement of weaker sections, and sustainable solution for differently abled people, and as we've just seen now for promoting the environmental cause. The rigor in the search and the matching meticulousness in the final selection of the deserving candidate by eminent members of the jury merits our deep appreciation. May I also express my sincere felicitations to the recipient of this year's award, Kiran Society from Varanasi, and wish them much success in their further endeavors. Personally, I am deeply honored to be invited to this distinguished gathering to share reminiscences about my friend Nina and speak about her rich and varied life. Sadly, she left us in the prime of life but not without advancing her vision and fulfilling many of her dreams, leaving behind a singular record of achievements, a loving family, and her two brilliant sons. An outstanding diplomat, Nina Sibyl represented her country with pride and distinction at the UN in New York, Cairo, and as ambassador of India to UNESCO in Paris. As we have just recalled and is well known, she went an extra mile in promoting and defending rights of the marginalized and the disadvantaged in international social and educational programs in the world bodies. Nina's love for literature and the written word was her passion since college days, which saw a manifestation of her talent and creativity as a writer of excellent prose. But even as she had already reached a senior position in her successful career as a diplomat, and made a name in the literary world as a writer of repute, she was not at rest till she could pursue her quest for learning and acquiring knowledge in other fields. Being wedded to an eminent lawyer, understandably, it led her to study of law and legal studies, for which she took a sabbatical from diplomacy and international relations to complete a law degree, which is very, very rare. Then what was her first calling? She had so many diverse interests and equally at ease, being the kind of multifaceted and versatile person that she was. It really becomes difficult to say that. But what is important to remember is that she was equally at ease in each of these completely diverse fields. One moment, Nina could be, and Kapil will recall, Nina could be in an animated discussion on Plato and Aristotle, or engaged in a critique of Marxism with her peers, or arguing about a fine point in law and jurisprudence. And the next, you could find her as immersed in her beautiful home, centered on her two wonderful boys as a devoted mother, 
as feminine and caring a companion to her husband, as ready to learn culinary skills and pick up recipes from the family cook, Bishambar. Her love for the mountains took her to formidable heights. Nina was one of our first women in the, in the, in the foreign ministry to go on the Kailash Mansarova pilgrimage. That perhaps I think should give us some idea, a hint of what kind of a person she was, a fragile beauty with an indomitable will. What made this possible, I often wondered. And, and I learned a great deal from that to find this right balance and equilibrium in my own life. Nina was a happy blend of sharp intellect and an irrepressible down-to-earth zest for exploring and savoring life in its various moods, colors, and hues, a rare ability which allowed her to live life on her own terms and yet never felt compelled to exclude any role as each role was authentic to her persona. In my mind, nothing captures this delightful duality in her personality more vividly than the image of Nina being welcomed as a bride a day after her wedding on the first day in Kapil's family home in Chandigarh. On the one hand, she was being introduced by her proud father-in-law as the daughter-in-law who had just started out her career in the prestigious Indian Foreign Service, and on the other, she was being pampered with all the fuss and finery by her mother-in-law and sisters-in-law. Looking radiant in a pink chiffon sari with a blue border, she was particularly tickled with the novelty of a multi-stringed gold necklace. And twirling it, them said to me in a hushed tone, Neelam, do you know it's a funny name, an amusing name, Matarmala. So, <laughs> anyway, so we covered much of life's journey in early years together. Our friendship was forged in the haze and hubris of youth and growing up with conflicting desires and dreams of the head and the heart. We were just 18 when we met, studying different subjects in Miranda House. Our rooms in the hostel were across each other's in the same block, though in many ways our temperaments were different. I was never planned, I was unrehearsed, she was focused, very uh, stable and always an achiever, but we just connected instinctively. Nina, being a serious scholar, would study late into the night, and I, having spent the day in student politics and discussions with class fellows in the university coffee house, would only find time to study at night. And being the only ones awake and studying at that hour, we were sustained by her mother's thoughtful supply of rich plum cakes and exotic treats. We would catch up on the day, sometimes talk about our families, and often end up sharing our aspirations and confusions about the future. Inevitably, our life choices too were influenced by each other. Being one year senior, Nina finished first and was selected to the post of a lecturer in English literature, along with our equally close friend and her class fellow, Lalita Ghosh. I'm sure the family would recall her well. She, her, her nickname was Panda, and my father, when he would see me, having returned at the end of the day, half of which was spent with these two friends, and he would come and indulgently smile. So this is Andy Panda time, because there used to be a comic in our childhood, remember? So, so uh, I followed them a year later in the history department in Delhi University, and our threesome was inseparable. But Nina had found her path already, as her heart had made a choice to be with the man she had met and loved since she was 16, our equally dear friend Kapil, as her life partner. I was still dreaming of going on to Yale or Stanford to pursue my interest in China until persuaded by Nina and, if I may also seek your indulgence to lapse into Punjabi, by Kapil who said, Chhaddo, to see kudiyan ta ko kam da kam karo. So to fill up my application for the UPSC examination. It was the last day we rushed to Dholpur house on Shah Jahan Road, we did not have a pen, we barely managed to take the necessary certificates and fees, and Kapil loaned us, lent us a stout-looking black writing pen. <laughs> which slipped out of the khadi bag we were carrying after filling the form. <laughs> he was understandably a little annoyed at our carelessness, but being good-natured and happy that the forms were submitted before the deadline, he let go, and Nina made light of it, saying, come on, Kapil, it was only a pen. <laughs> <laughs> we, 
we also became, and I'll come back to it, I think, in a while, because that stays, that stays a link between me and Kapil now that Nina is not there. We also became a part of each other's families. Nina enjoyed occasional weekend visits to my home for its openness and warmth, while I was fascinated by the picture postcard Pretty Home her father built in Dehradun, which I visited some years later in 1974 to greet her firstborn Amit on my way to join the foundation course at Masuri with my accidental entry into the career of foreign services I just recounted. On return from her postings in different parts of the world, I visited her at their Maharani Bag home where I met her younger son, Akhil, an endearing and still an unsteady toddler running around in circles to escape his nani's cajoling to eat something. We have come a long way from that. These two young, handsome men, so successful and uh, as lawyers and with their wonderful spouses. I'm so happy to see them today. These were some special moments in our friendship. Nina's heroism for me lay not in dramatic deeds or anecdotes, but in the simple interactions and give and take in the ordinariness of her daily lives. Being a writer, she was intuitively perceptive and viewed lives of others or the less fortunate with empathy. It was in the capacity of Nina's large heart to encourage others, readiness to share her ideas, and give boundless emotional and practical support when needed that some of her grand gestures and great deeds were to be found. Her batchmate in service, also her roommate and a dear friend I spoke to when I said I'm, I've been asked to speak, Surya Kanti, Ambassador Surya Kanti Tripathi, recalled a simple but unforgettable thoughtful gesture by Nina. On landing in Delhi from Andhra, she was shivering in her first winter and did not know where to get a blanket immediately. She said Nina quietly arranged one on her visit home the next weekend. This was the same concern, so simple an act really, but this was the same concern and commitment to the well-being of others that animated her advocacy of the commendable social causes she took up later that we are talking about publicly. We remained in touch almost till the end, and even though we made new friends along the way and our assignments took us to different continents, the last time Nina and I met was in Paris. She wanted to see me to share some exciting news of her upcoming assignment as UNESCO's representative at New York before I left on my posting to China. I returned after nearly five years on my first head of mission posting again as ambassador to UNESCO in early 2000, sadly only in time to get the tragic news of her passing away. I am deeply grateful to you, dear Kapil, for inviting me today and giving me an opportunity to redeem my debt of friendship to my friend Nina and by sharing my reminiscences, pay a tribute to her memory. But let the other debt of the lost black pen remain as a reminder of the unique friendship we shared once upon a time. After all, as Nina would have said, it was only a mobla. <laughs> <laughs> and my first encounter with a classic Mobla pin. So dear Nina, wherever you are, you will forever be in our hearts. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neelam Ji, for those warm and heartfelt words and for paying tribute and shining light on the memories of Nina Sibalji. I now have the pleasure of calling upon the awardee of the 20th Nina Sibyl Memorial Award for the Differently Abled, Kiran Society, Madhupur Varanasi, UP. Uh, I request Dr. Kuldeep Singh, Executive Director of Kiran Society, to come on stage. Kiran Society focuses on programs to enable, equip, and empower differently abled children alongside their communities in rural and urban underprivileged areas. Dr. Kuldeep Singh, please come on the dais, share a few words with us, as well as make your presentation. Good evening, Honorable Dr. Karan Singh Ji. 
रेस्पेक्टेड कपिल सिपल जी आशा चंद्रा जी सरला जी नीलम जी रीता मैनन जी एग्जीक्यूटिव कमेटी मेंबर्स ऑफ आई एफ आ एंड ऑल डिग्नेटरी प्रेजेंट हेयर रीडिंग फ्रॉम किरण सोसाइटी वाराणसी इट इज़ ए ग्रेट ऑनर फॉर मी टू रिसीव ट्वेंटी आई एफ आ नैना सिब्बल अवार्ड फॉर किरण सोसाइटी आई एफ आई इज़ ए रिनोड एन जी ओ वर्किंग फॉर द वेलफेयर ऑफ माइंड काइंड एंड वुमेन एम्पावरमेंट फॉर लास्ट नाइन्टी थ्री ईयर्स सो किरण एंड आई एफ आ कम्प्लीमेंट ईच अदर रीजन्स I am obliged for this great honor and recognition to Kiran Society for our services to differently abled children. Kiran means ray of home, incepted in 1990 by Sangeeta ji, a then Swiss nun, now Indian. At the age of six, she heard about society where differently abled children are unable to access education. She got herself trained in nursing to come to India in the year of. 1972 in our base madhupur village in varanasi kiran society which is properly known as kiran village is now grown to provide a comprehensive care for differently able children and able children from marginalized society we believe in talk talk to action our uniqueness our usp lies in inclusive approach in all our intervention for last 32 years sangeeta ji our founder along with the team member has dedicated her life to translate her dream into the reality the seed become full tree and bringing a ray of hope by empowering lives of thousand of person with disabilities this journey was not so easy i acknowledge unconditional support of all colleagues parents friends local authority together we had overcome every obstacle the ray of hope kiran continues i would now request to show a brief video about kiran activities i want to show you it now yes sure शहर में स्थित बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी से 12 किलोमीटर दूर दक्षिण की तरफ माधोपुर गांव में स्थित एक ऐसी संस्था है जो समावेशी शिक्षा के विकास के प्रति दृढ़ संकल्पित है 1990 से ही ये संस्था दिव्यांग बच्चों और आर्थिक रूप से दुर्बल वर्ग के बच्चों के लिए शिक्षा का एक ऐसा वातावरण तैयार कर रही है जिसमे इन्हें अन्य बच्चों के साथ पढ़ने खाने एवं खेलने के समान अवसर प्रदान किए जाते हैं इसके अलावा इनके सर्वांगीण विकास के लिए समय समय पर समर कैंप शैक्षिक भ्रमण आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट आदि में भाग लेने के पूरे अवसर प्रदान किए जाते हैं किरण सोसाइटी मुख्य रूप से सेरेब्रल पॉलिसी गामक यानी चलने फिरने से संबंधित अक्षमता वाले बच्चों के साथ कार्य करते हुए बौद्धिक दिव्यांग शवर दिव्यांग स्वलीन अल्पदृष्टि 
तथा एकाग्रता की कमी वाले बच्चों को भी अपनी सेवाएं प्रदान करती है समावेशी शिक्षा का उद्देश्य एक सहायक एवं अनुकूल वातावरण की रचना करना होता है ताकि सभी को पूरी भागीदारी का समान अवसर प्राप्त हो सके और इस तरह दिव्यांग बच्चे शिक्षा की मुख्य धारा में शामिल हो सके समावेशी शिक्षा में बच्चों की विभिन्न आवश्यकताओं को समझा जाता है और उसी के अनुसार सिखाने के विभिन्न तरीकों और सहायक सेवाओं का प्रयोग करके माता पिता तथा समाज का सहयोग लेकर उन्हें शिक्षा की ओर अग्रसर किया जाता है किरण विद्यालय में सभी बच्चों के दिन की शुरुआत प्रार्थना सभा से होती है जिसमें प्रार्थना राष्ट्रगान शुभ विचार या प्रतिज्ञा बोलने में सभी बच्चों को समान अवसर मिलते हैं उस दौरान सभी बच्चों को शिक्षक सांकेतिक भाषा के माध्यम से बातों को समझाते हैं सुबह के नाश्ता वितरण में बच्चों की मदद लेना विद्यालय का सोचा समझा प्रयास है जिससे बच्चों में शुरुआत से ही सहयोग की प्रवृत्ति आकार लेने लगती है शिक्षक कक्षा में सभी बच्चों की जरूरतों को ध्यान में रखते हुए विभिन्न शिक्षण सामग्रियों के माध्यम से हर बच्चे की सीखने की क्षमता को अधिकतम स्तर पर ले जाने का प्रयास करते हैं लंच का समय सभी विद्यालयों का एक समान होता है खास केवल किरण विद्यालय का प्ले हो जाता है यहाँ सभी बच्चे एक साथ तरह तरह के खेल खेलते हुए दिखते हैं ये इस बात का साक्षी है कि दिव्यांगता अपने आप में अक्षमता नहीं बल्कि ये लोगों का नजरिया है पाठ्य सहगामी गतिविधियों में भी समावेशन अछूता नहीं रहता है शिक्षक सभी बच्चों को एक साथ महीने में दो बार उनकी रुचि के अनुसार आर्ट एंड क्राफ्ट नृत्य गायन पेंटिंग बागवानी नाटक खुशी खुशी सीखने का मौका देते हैं किरण के परिवेश में सहयोग और समान अवसर की सुगंध चारों ओर फैली है यही समावेशन की सुंदरता है और यही किरण सोसाइटी की Once again, I am thankful to IIFA. I am more energized in our mission of holistic development of able children. Last but not least, I would request each one of you to please visit Kiran. You are most welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Kuldeep Singh Ji, for enlightening us on the truly impressive, impressive work your organization is doing. 
and we hope that this award will help you in taking all your activities forward. I would now like to invite Dr. Renu Malvia, the Honorary Secretary of IWFA and an Associate Professor in the Department of Education at Lady Irwin College to read out the citation. She's Professor, not Associate. I apologize, Professor Renu Malvia. <laughs> Uh, it's my proud privilege uh, to read out the citation. The All India Women's Education Fund Association, IWFA, is pleased to present the 20th Nina Sibyl Memorial Award 2020 to Kiran Society, Madhopur, Varanasi, UP, in recognition of their programs to enable, equip, and empower differently abled children along with their communities in rural and urban underprivileged societies. Kiran, meaning a ray of light, was founded in 1990 by Sangeeta JK, as just, uh, I mean, informed, and a small group of people from diverse social, cultural, and religious backgrounds. Their mantra was inclusivity and committed to create from the grassroots an inclusive mainstream community. From their base in Madhapur, Varanasi, Kiran Society's comprehensive outreach includes schools to impart inclusive and special education with vocational skill training, while offering a diploma in education DED in special education, Six hostels provide accommodation, among others, for children with neurological impairment, There's like cerebral palsy, intellectual disability, autism spectrum disorder. In-house capacity building training is provided for parents of children with disabilities. Over the last 32 years, Kiran Society has imparted and transformed more than 45,000 lives in UP, Bihar, and Jharkhand. Through this award, IWFA recognizes the inclusive vision of Kiran Society and the Board of Governors and the professionally managed team represented by Dr. Kuldeep Singh, Dikti, Executive Director, in providing socially disadvantaged and differently abled children rehabilitation services, rights, entitlement, equal opportunities, and dignity through a life cycle approach. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Malvia, for doing the honors. I would now request Dr. Karan Singh and Mr. Kapil Sibal to present the award and a check of 8 lakh rupees to Kiran Society. Mr. Kuldeep Singh. <laughs> it 
Congratulations, Kuldeep Ji, for receiving the prestigious award in recognition of the immense contribution of your organization. On this note, I would now like to invite Mr. Kapil Singh. <laughs> this is the same mistake that was made uh, earlier, also. earlier also. I would. <laughs> I would like to invite Mr. Kapil Sibyl. I would like to apologize for my nervousness, sir. Uh, MP Rajya Sabha, leading lawyer, poet, and the man who needs no introduction to this August gathering to say a few words and address the gathering today. <laughs> My wife was actually Nina Singh, so it's not wrong for you to me to call Kapil Singh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Well, what can I say? Dr. Karan Singh Ji, I, I cannot thank you enough. 20 years is a long, long journey. And he stood by us. Always there, never said no. Always there before time. That's the character of Dr. Karan Singh. Thank you very much. I can't thank Ayawafa. Um, you know, they, they have taken this forward uh, with, with, with commitment, um, scrutinized every application that came to them, you know, and, and, and you know, they would come to me and said, these are the four candidates or five candidates. They would shortlist from the several applications that they receive and then we discuss which should be awarded, who should be awarded. And, 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 and every year it was something different. And all over the country, it's, it's not limited to one particular place. So, and I have far really, because without you, this would not have happened. So thank you very much. And thank you very much, Asha Chandra for being there always, President of Ayabafa. Thank you, Rita Menonji, for that wonderful, wonderful film that you showed. And that's really, um, unless we concentrate on the five elements of matter, I think that the world needs to address issues relating those, to those five elements. But unfortunately, we are taken up by consumerism and liberal economies and and the commercial world which sort of devalues uh, the importance of those five elements. But thank you very much for showing that film to us. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Sarla Manchandaji, for being the convener of Ayabafa. Uh, thank you, um, congratulations Kuldeep Singh Ji and Kiran Society for the wonderful work that you are doing, not just in Uttar Pradesh, but in other parts of the country. And we'll certainly, the opportunity, now that I'm a member of Parliament from Uttar Pradesh, maybe I'll visit Varanasi. I'm a little afraid to do so nowadays, but I will. <laughs> um, Dr. Karan Singh, you've talked about the existential crisis, and I fully appreciate your thoughts on it. But there are lots of existential crises that we are facing apart from the three that you mentioned. And I think that we need to all get together to face them. And, and because I always have believed that and unless, and that's really what, what we see in how we work for people who are challenged. Actually, uh, I believe the human mind, uh, the human heart essentially works, wants to work with people, wants to help people. And I think this is, this is shown in the kind of outreach that these organizations have and for the 20 years that we've seen. So I think that kind of ability to develop empathy for others and help people is slowly disappearing. And, and I think we need, to, we need to rethink the way we live, rethink the way we look at our neighbor, rethink the way we deal with each other, rethink we, the way we look, you know, feel about each other. And unless our nation, we as a society, look at life in that fashion, I don't think that we're going to, we're going to be, continue to be faced with a, with a real existential crisis. But be that as it may, I, I, want to, I don't want to take more time, but I, as always, at the end of, but you know, before, before anything else, the one thing that has moved me today, and I think that's the, 
what Neelam you have done for me <laughs> is, is, is something extraordinary. I have, you, you've brought me back those wonderful memories. I don't think that both Nina and you should never have gone to the Foreign Service, quite frankly. <laughs> You know, she was deeply, deeply involved in Duta politics, and 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 and, you know, and uh, she would have made a great politician. She has that great ability to reach out to people. And Nina actually wanted to be a writer, and she, I know, I forced them both to go to the Foreign Service and sit for the exam. So by default, I think, but they did, of course, they did the country proud for being there. But what you did today, I mean, what you said today, is something that's remarkable. Thank you very much. Dr. Dr. Karan Singh just mentioned it's 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 the best that he has heard. Yes. Really, I appreciate that. So let me end up with something philosophical. Poetry poem. A poem. Manzil pe pahunch ke karunga kya? Manzil pe pahunch ke karunga kya? Vaha pe vaha se vapis bhi aana lazmi hai. मंजिल पे पहुंच के करूंगा क्या वहां से वापस भी आना लाजमी है ऐसा नशा कि छोड़ कर करूंगा क्या ऐसा नशा कि छोड़ कर करूंगा क्या महकाने का दोस्ताना लाजमी है ऐसा नशा कि छोड़ कर करूंगा क्या महकाने का दोस्ताना लाजमी है दूर होकर भी बता करूंगा क्या दूर होकर भी बता करूंगा क्या तेरे शहर में घर बसाना लाजमी है दूर होकर भी बता करूंगा क्या तेरे शहर में घर बसाना लाजमी है अपना बना के तूने अब ठुकरा दिया अपना बना के तूने अब ठुकरा दिया फिर भी तुझे अपना बनाना लाजमी है अपना बना के तूने अब ठुकरा दिया फिर भी तुझको अपना बनाना लाजमी है गली गली में ये जो आग जल रही है गली गली में ये जो आग जल रही है उस आग को हमें बुझाना लाजमी है गली गली में ये जो आग जल रही है उसे उस आग को हमें बुझाना लाजमी है खुदा के वास्ते इस दहशती को छोड़ दे तो खुदा के वास्ते इस दहशती को छोड़ दे तू ये गुलिस्ता उजाड़ना क्या लाजमी है थैंक यू थैंक यू मिस्टर सिब्बल फॉर योर थॉट प्रोवोकिंग वर्ड्स एंड दैट ब्यूटिफुल पोइट्री आई वुड नाउ लाइक टू रिक्वेस्ट Uh, Mrs. Sarla Manchanda, the convener of the Nina Sibyl Award, to kindly give the vote of thanks. Thank you, Shani. Namaskar, respected Dr. Karan Singh ji, Kapil Sibyl ji, Shri Mati Neelam Sabarwal, Dr. Kuldeep Singh. and all the friends in the audience as well as those who are attending today's event on youtube i am here to offer vote of thanks on behalf of iwafa i am at a loss of words to thank enough two persons dr karan singh and dr and shri kapil sibbal dr karan singh who conceptualized such a befitting tribute to shrimati neena sibbal and shri kapil sibbal who always extends whole hearted support financial and otherwise neena was very sensitive and compassionate towards less privileged as you have been hearing all through and she dreamt of a of every indian youth to lead a happy healthy and normal life and kapil ji doesn't spare an effort to make nina's dreams come true so what could be a better gift than such an event on her birthday i thank ms neelam sabarwal for making us aware about nina of her young days and later in foreign service all these details about her which 
she told us we were not aware of thus far but she remembered her in a real very sweet and remarkable way and it is a pleasure for us to share her thoughts i sincerely thank dr kuldeep singh for showing the beautiful presentation about kiran society which is very informative and tells us about society's reach and their objective of inclusive society i thank ms rita menon for showing us the film by iwafa on lifestyle of environment for environment and how to reduce the risk of climate change at un's csw 66 event as dr karan singh has already pointed out that one of one of the major problems facing us today is how to tackle the risk of climate change selecting the awardee uh, sorry i thank dr renu malviya for conducting five webinars on dyslexia very successfully all the speakers were really excellent and making the report ready especially for today's release also for reading the citation to kiran society selecting the awardee was really a her and her kulian task involving scrutiny of 33 applications and judging them on the basis of information provided by the organizations regarding various aspects of their functioning websites google searches annual reports financial audit and other due diligence i thank the most efficient ifa jury team consisting of ms asha chandra dr adar sharma dr renu malviya dr mayanka gupta ms ishani chandra dr mona suri and ms shweta and of course myself so you can imagine how long was how big was the jury committee so we thought we should never go wrong anywhere in selecting the proper awardee I thank IWFA president Ms Asha Chandra for introducing IWFA to the audience and guiding her entire team for organizing the event successfully. I also thank Dr T G Rupa of Lady Irwin College for her melodious invocation and director of the college Dr Anupa Sidhu for her overall support support and permitting the students to be interns. and add efficiency and glamour to the event yes young people are always glamorous <laughs> i am really thankful to ms ishani chandra for being such a lively mc thank you ishani and i really thank dr kapil sibal for his wonderful poem and he always recites poem on this day and it is really heart touching always My sincere thanks to Ms Asha Huja IWFA's office secretary who worked tirelessly for the last 4 months to make today's function successful. Thank you. Thank you so much Mrs Manchanda. This day would not have been possible without your active contribution. Thank you. I would now request all the dignitaries Dr Karan Singh Mr Kapil Sibal Honorable Ambassador Neelam Sabrawal ji Dr Kuldeep Singh and all the IWFA executive members to come up on the dais so that we can take a last commemorative photograph before we take your leave tonight Dr Siddhu Chandni Singh ki to kya chalta pehle बच्चों को कह रही हूँ Thank you everyone for joining us tonight.